Hello and welcome to episode 33 of the Alfa Romeo Driver podcast, brought to you by the Alfa Romeo Owners Club. I'm Guy Swarbrick and it's time for another one of our roundtable discussions. With me I have the usual suspects, club chairman and East Midlands section secretary John Griffiths, club manager Nick Wright and board member and Mito registrar David Faithful. Good afternoon gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon Guy. Feels like we haven't done one of these roundtables for ages and, and there's there's a lot of things going on at the moment, not least of which is is National Alpha Day on the 27th of June. And we'll talk about what's coming this year in in a moment. But I thought it'd be useful for people who, who weren't at Bista, and I know there was, what, 1,200 people who were there. Um, but for people who weren't there, some of some of our highlights from 2019. John, what, what was it that you thought was, was good about Bista? I think, um, for me, really, the overall scale of it was just phenomenal. We'd had hopes for the venue and building on the previous years when we've had around 600 to 650 cars as a max. That's the kind of basis we'd had it at. But we actually had 50 percent more than that in the end. And looking at the entrance and the way the cars come in and loop in the distance up towards the airfield, uh, that's rather the runways and then loop back. At one point, I counted 70 cars in just in that queue alone coming in. I mean, they were soon through the gate, but the way the rows built, the row of new Julias, I think we ended up with about 75 of those in the end alone, plus Stelvios. And then all the model parking behind us as it built up during the morning it was just phenomenal. And I think we ended up with 914 alphas in the end. The next bit then related to the volume of it was walking through to the engineering zone. Uh, I'd been on duty in the morning, kind of splitting up the traffic and pointing the older models, pre-95 stuff through to the engineering zone. And to see the work that had gone on in there to park the classics up around the buildings and the beautiful trees and the avenues, it just absolutely took my breath away. By then, it was kind of midday that I got to walk through there and already people had set up little picnics and so on. And the atmosphere was tremendous. And then to come back out to the the airfield side and to see the the work that had gone on by the volunteers in in lining up all of those cars by model, which honestly, it blew me away. It was phenomenal. Um, So they're the thing, just the scale of it hit me really and how the plans that were on a little bit of paper that I'd done early on and others had helped with to turn into reality which is phenomenal and i i think the thing that impressed me most about the scale of the venue was you know we had a huge number of cars there and that was great and it, it did feel like there were a lot of cars there but it didn't feel like it was all kind of crammed in and there was still plenty of space for picnics or you know kind of wandering around and relaxing as well as all the cars that's right and, and the site is just so good for that i am noticing some other car clubs are are picking up probably where we we led uh, i know there's a jaguar club there in july and they're looking forward to similar things but yeah the, the, you're not on top of each other we've got uh, we're hopefully coming out of the covid restrictions but you know had we had to adapt to loads of gaps between cars we'd be able to hopefully we won't have to do that i was gonna say john said from the organizer's point of view and we were all i think we we're all there for uh, pre-event site visits um we had ideas on bits of paper and what we wanted to do and everything. As John said, so many cars did turn up and it just all worked so well. It, it, you said there's so much space there. And um, same as John, when I walked through into the engineering quarters later on, it was like, wow, what's going on here? And it's like the, it's like the pictures you see on the internet of their scrambles and things. It was just like that, but with, a, with lovely alphas parked everywhere. But, uh, yeah. You obviously get bogged down with um, you know, making sure that it's all going smoothly and, and, uh, and running the event. But did you get a chance to to wander around and see things? I had a quick walk around the engineering quarter, yeah. Um, just to try and get some photographs for that for about 10 minutes, that was it. Um, I didn't I didn't get around to the, the more uh, modern parking on the airfield side at all, no. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, and we had about, uh, I'm sure it was about 50 or 55 mitos. Um Probably best part of double lap for the Juliettas. And as you said, there was r- just lines and lines of Julias and Stelvios. And remember, this was two years ago, actually. So um, back then, you didn't you didn't see that volume of Stelvios and Julias yet. You just didn't see them in that one place. And of course, the dealer we had, they brought along the racing edition Julia and Stelvio, didn't they? That was the first time a lot of people had seen those in the flesh as well. So they were on display, which was really cool. 
Yeah, that was uh, Alpha UK got those actually because it's before Goodwood, so ah, okay. the cars were over. Now we're hopeful, we're very much hopeful that we'll get the GTAM this year, one of the press cars. Um, very much fingers crossed at this stage, but it's been promised, and that should be just amazing to see in the flesh. Yeah, yeah, and the the nice thing about being involved in um, in helping John with the the model parking map was I was able to leave the the nine three nine Spider line with no end on it. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I think I think we, we we were pushing forty nine three nine spiders, which is yeah, um, we've never had anything like that before. I want to see if this well, GTA M will fit in the back of the club van as well. Well, we can get the trailer on. <laughs> it's got plan. a tow hook, yeah. so I'm sure we can sort something well, out. That'll do. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I tell you, the other highlight from 2019 for me though was the volume of uh, suds. Yeah, there was I think 23 suds, and um, it. It's pretty rare that you see that kind of volume of, of alpha sods and sprints together in one place. Yeah. So when I, um, cause I bought my, well, this sod that I own now, I bought that early in 2019 and that was the first and only show that it's been to really. And I was lining up the Mitos and I had my sod with me and I had to go and park it around in the engineering quarter. And as I went around there, there was just suds everywhere. And I, and I, and I was sort, I mean, I, the story I give is I got stuck there parking the suds, but no, I was completely enjoying myself <laughs> in my element for a good hour or so. And so, yeah, I'd never seen so many. Well, I personally had never seen so many suds in one place. And I think that's probably the case for a lot of people. Yeah, I certainly hadn't for, for 20 years. No, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And I, I think that might we might even do better this time because in the um, the Aftersud register on group on Facebook, uh, there's new suds appearing almost every week, so, uh, yeah. so hopefully so we'll in be gallery well having a big push. Yeah, yeah. I uh, of course the first National Alpha Day I went to was '85 at Stanford Hall, <laughs> and I was in my Alpha sud then. And uh, gosh, them it, they probably weren't more than 50 at that event. So we're doing pretty well. What 36 years later, you know, which is amazing given I'm only 38 now. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I think it was widely acknowledged to be one of the best, if not the best, National Alpha Day we've ever had. Certainly one of one of the biggest in in modern times. Um, so what are we going to do to top that this year? One of the best things people will have noticed on our advertising material is that we have a bit of a star guest. And uh, hopefully uh, she'll be very much um, a key attraction of the event. Um, thanks to David Faithful, who's got the relationship, as it were, Vicky Butler-Henderson, who's known and loved by many from TV motoring shows is going to be along. And uh, she can play quite a role on the day, I think. And as a, a bit of a warm up, we've got Vicky on uh, on the next podcast to, yeah. to talk about her career and, and some of the things that she'll be doing on the day. So, David, how did you convince her to come along for us this time? Let's be clear. I don't know her very, very well. We've stayed in contact a couple of times um, since she came to our Mito uh, 10th anniversary in 2018. Yeah. Um, but she's just a really nice person. You know, when you see her on the telly, in fact, when you see a lot of people on the telly, you, see, you sort of create an image of them, don't you, in your head? Um, but she's just a really nice person. She's got a lovely family, lovely kids. Um, she's married to um, one of the editors who's on, uh, who was on Top Gear and is now on the Grand Tour and so on. So they're a proper TV family. Yeah. Um, but she's got a real love of Alfa Romeo. She really has. So um, she does not take a lot of convincing to do us a huge favour for the Alfa Romeo Owners Club. You know, I don't think that she's available at the drop of a hat. She is quite hard to get into her diary and so on. Um, and she, she's not, she's really down to earth. So she doesn't have a, you know, a big team behind her or a PA. She does her own uh, correspondence. She does her own email. She manages her own diary. So she's tricky to get hold of sometimes. But She's just a lovely person and she loves alphas and she loves meeting people. She was yeah. great at our Mito event and she still talks about that. She still talks and names individuals she met at that session. So, Gosh. yeah, she's a proper people person. Actually. So she is obviously a car girl, but um, she's a nice yeah. people person, too. She's nice to be around and she'll, she'll bring something special to the day, I think. Great. I think we'll have plenty of photo opportunities with her anyway, and uh, we'll we'll get her on to onto duties with microphone, with a bit of interviewing of people. Coming on from that guy, of course, this year we're going to build a kind of parade ring area. I uh, don't want to make it sound too grand, but we'll be inviting certain cars up, and we can have some interviews over the PA with their owners. And I'm sure Vicky would uh, would be pleased to help out with that for us. And she really should add a nice additional angle, hearing cars and seeing them move. 
and that um that parade ring nick is is going to be in the middle of the the kind of trade area if you like what else is going to be there um there'll be obviously the club shop membership tent um pirelli are coming along to support us again with their hospitality unit hopefully with the formula one simulators this year yeah, as long as they don't get uh, stolen any, the day before yes yeah. yes anyone didn't hear last time they got stolen yeah, from the truck not, the day before not good um no, so they've, they've promised to come along and support us again. Um, Alfa Romeo UK, obviously they'll be there. Unity, Alfa Romeo coming to support us again, which is very good of them. Yeah. Mr. Swarbrick has his sim racing truck organised, I believe. We'll have eight simulators there. We'll be running a, a competition throughout the day. I think the six fastest uh, members of the public or club members during the course of the day will get to race two of our regular racers in a, in a final um, with a, a big prize, all supported by Chris Knott. Brilliant. Mm. Just outside there, of course, we, we're going to have the uh, club concourse and show and shine competition. Um, uh, I know, Nick, um, just today you've, you've put up the, the advert for that online. So we're inviting entries as of now. Um, for Again, for concourse, that's got divisions in it by decade. We had pre-62, I think, is the first category. Uh, 62 to 71, 71 to 81, and so on, up to 2010. The show and shine is for cars that aren't quite concourse. It's it's more the for the absolute fun element. Now, we had some stunning, stunning entries in that last time, though, I must say. Uh, Paul Curry's 147 GTA was out of this world uh, as uh, and won overall. In the main concourse, gosh, there were some fabulous machines uh, Robbie Webb won overall with a 1900 CSS that looked like it was brand new, <laughs> just incredible. And of course, there's some some uh, there's always some tremendous competition in there as well with uh, in the categories with some normally some absolute rarities like nowadays 164s and 155 V6s. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, no, uh, talking talking of rarities, as we trailed on the um, no such thing as a Brera Quadrifoglio, we will have every single 939 series car to leave the factory with a cloverleaf badge on it uh, we should have both both the, of them yeah <laughs> both both the 939 spider mila Melia editions so i think we, they, they need a, a a unique category in the show and shine i think so we'll have those uh, we'll have the model parking we'll also be selecting the odd car as they come in into a special display area and, and hopefully we'll be able to intercept them and have a chat uh, we also want to encourage people with modified cars along again um, sometimes those go into their own areas, but we'll look to build a line for them if we get a good number along. And Ben Cook, who operates our uh, modified register, will be on that, I'm sure. I was just checking the ticket site before we started recording this. We're, they've only been on sale four and a half days so far. Obviously, we're a little bit late with people being furloughed and everything, but uh, we've sold over a third of the ticket, the available tickets already wow. in four and a half days, which is That's great going. Quite incredible. And really. the club so, magazine's yeah. not yeah. gone out yet to advertise it, has it? So. Uh, yes. <laughs> or or yeah. indeed this pod podcast. <laughs> True. Yeah, so. Obviously, we will be fairly limited on numbers with COVID and everything. So Yeah, we're, so. we're keen for people to get signed up uh, so they're not disappointed. Yeah. And it's ticket only, as we've said before. You can't pay cash on the gate. Good point. You yeah. can't pay cash on the gate, but if you arrive in a car in in the line, could you go online and book a book a ticket online from your phone in the car? You can indeed. Yeah, just show it on the on the gate. With uh, all the tickets are being scanned in this year, doing it properly for COVID again, so we don't have to touch papers and tickets. So, um, but yeah, to, as long as you get it on your screen and you show it, then we're yeah, absolutely fine. The tickets will be on sale all that day Sunday as well. Anyway, so. We won't be stopping them. So good point. So there. we've got a limit on tickets, but it's a high limit basically. So uh, people shouldn't be worrying too much. But at the same time, if you want to go, I would recommend getting it. As Fred Pontoon used to say, book early. Book early, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of other things on that. We've got plenty of food vendors there. Um, so you can bring a picnic, of course. Um, we've also got the Wrigley Monkey Craft Brewery that will be open. And a new operation called Skywave Gin. So you know, if you've got somebody that can drive you there, <laughs> you could make it a prop, <laughs> could make it a proper day out. But, uh, I, I think they're both licensed for takeaways as well. They are, yeah, yeah. They'll yeah. certainly be selling bottles and so on. It's driving home's a problem, John. Not driving well, uh, there. Yeah, good point. Yeah, <laughs> get get driven. That's, there. that's how. I, that's how. What my wife and I share the driving. I drive there. She drives. Yeah, home. that sounds good up front, then, doesn't it? That's, I might try that. We've missed a trick there. We we could have laid on a, a bus service, couldn't we? Twenty quid a 
yeah. 20 quid a go and uh yeah we'll take you to your door yeah yeah well we could still do that as long as bistro will let us pick up the cars the following yeah. day yeah there's an idea you never know <laughs> Um, I, I suppose the one thing we haven't actually mentioned, uh, I think we, I, I mentioned the date at the beginning. What, what's the, the timing for the event? It will open at half past nine for the public. Yeah. And I think four o'clock is a yeah. finish. Prize giving's normally around three o'clock. So we'll, people start to always seem to drift away a bit after that. So, But around four o'clock is the formal close. Uh, one exciting thing this year is people from the engineering zone will be able to exit through the main gate rather than having to trek back to the entrance we're using in the morning. So that will help with some of the traffic flow, certainly with our parade ring in the middle bit. Brilliant. Anything else we want to talk about about National Alpha Day? Because we've got lots of other things to talk about as well. Didn't mention trade stands. I mentioned food vendors. But uh, have we got much by way of trade signed up yet, Nick? Trade-wise, we've got in Brookfield, the Sud Shop. Italian miniatures are going. Chris Knott will be there to support us. Auto Italia, of course. Um, Pirelli, as we mentioned. Um, now Revive are coming. Oh, good. Mark, with these detailing products that you know all about. I do. From. Yeah, very good stuff as well. Um, yeah. Got some another member, memorabilia person coming that we haven't seen before, and uh, and Sega guys sim racing truck that we mentioned. Before. Great stuff! So there's a good few mm. bit of variety there as well. Bit, something for everybody, yes. <laughs> so away from National Alpha Day, uh, uh, probably the biggest news of the last couple of weeks is is sections are starting to open up and start to do some activities. Uh, in the Thames Valley section, we had our our first face to face meeting since our our Christmas dinner, which we always have in kind of February, March time. So over a year since we've had a, a proper face-to-face -face meeting, um, which was really well attended. Obviously, the turnout was limited by the the capacity in the pub, but we, we pretty much used the capacity we had. What have the rest of you been up to? So in East Midlands, we've had our first uh, May evening a night meet and we had a good bundle along for that and uh, again mindful of covid and distancing we were all outside but we uh, we did a convoy run around the lanes for about an hour uh, led by good pal brian smith who amazingly manages to keep all the cars together but when you're at the front of a convoy you've got to go rather slowly and then um then the following Sunday, we had our Fox run, which is a navigational type run. But again, that turned into a convoy too this year. And we had a fabulous time. Again, breakfast meat, um, good natch around the cars in sunshine this time. And 45 mile drive around Derbyshire coming back to the National Memorial Arboretum, which I hadn't been to before, which is a fabulous venue. And we had a really good special parking area there. And again, COVID aware, we were able to just split up outside and, and enjoy the afternoon around all the memorials. So that, that was really good. I know some other sections have started the meet and run concept as well as a good way of getting things going. Derbyshire had a well attended one uh, midweek. And I, I'm picking up on the grapevine on Facebook and so on that others are starting to at different ends of the country. And that's, that's great to see. There's a huge amount of pen, pent up uh, excitement about all of this and it was just brilliant particularly for me on Sunday it actually felt like gosh this is back to normality yeah you had to pop your mask on when you went inside the pub to use the facilities but getting to see our our old friends in the club face to face again was just brilliant. David? Ah. Well um, by the time this podcast goes out we'll be a week away from the uh, Mito gathering at Kerbera Sprint Course so we've been planning this, it seems like we've been planning it forever because we actually planned it for last year and we, we went up to the wire really, really keen that we could go ahead, but of course we couldn't. I then couldn't get any more dates last year because motorsport was all affected and Kerber is covered by motorsport. And then the only dates we could get was towards the end of last year and I thought that would be rubbish for weather. So here we are, Friday 18th of June. Um, We'll have, um, due to COVID restrictions, we'll have a maximum of 30 cars, though I think we'll probably go with about 25 cars. But yeah, we'll have a full complement of Mitos filling Kerbera Sprint Course. So that's going to be really the first, yeah, it's the first car-related outing I've done for a very long time, actually. But very much looking forward to that. We've been hosting a virtual Kerbera on, on the... Um... The virtual racing service. Yes, oh, really? I didn't see that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which has been been good fun. Um, Andrew Whitehead, who was our our champion last year, is a big big Mito enthusiast mm. and and has been around there a couple of times. I I, I was impressed with his thirty point seven eight second time <laughs> in the um, in the Dave Peddy uh, replica Mito, but uh, 
he, he's obviously found a, a glitch in the system because his best his best lap in a standard Mito QV is um, is a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not, quite sure. not quite sure what happened. I don't. I don't think he's going to match. He that must have reversed day. back across the finish strip or something. <laughs> Sounds a bit more like um, Jamie Porter's yeah. monster Mito. That that might be I, I think, a bit close. I think even that might take two or three. <laughs> but there's some there's some big events coming up as well, isn't there? Um, Mick Carr and the Scottish Day, and what else is going on over the course of the summer? Yeah, I'll pick up on Mick Carr because it's uh, it's me and our section that run that one. But that's on the 21st of August at Gaydon, the British Motor Museum. Uh, open to all club members and all owners of Italian cars in general. Should be a really good day that Sunday. Uh, it's a fabulous venue uh, just off the M40. I went there actually to uh, another club meeting three weeks ago. And uh, the venue itself is is great for late late summer when we tend to do a bit of rain because you've got uh, hard standing parking and then you've got two superb indoor displays of cars. So uh, it, it's a really good one. I know um, there'll be a number of other sections that are running their, uh, their big events uh, this summer and, and into the autumn who will be equally as excited. Scottish Italian Car Day this year. It missed it missed out last year, of course. Cotswolds have got their um, their Giro on the eighth of August this year at Catsford. Um and we've got a Southwest Alpha Day, which is um, Western Supermare, I think, a bit later in the in the summer. We have at the the Helicopter Museum. Yeah, that was another one that was all all organised for last year. That's on the Bank Holiday weekend, twenty ninth of August this year. So that was effectively rolled over. Um, we've got the Auto Italia events we'll be doing at Brooklands, Rabbi Castle, of course. Um, I've got three days at Silverstone Classic, end of July, which weather for should be good. And we've got a, um, they've given us a trap parade on, on the Saturday lunchtime. So that's our 110, 111th anniversary yes, in trap fact, parade. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, that always goes down well. People like driving around there. So yeah, absolutely. With hopefully full grandstands. But, uh, and then, of course, one one more national event towards the end of well, towards the end of the summer, beginning of the autumn in uh, in Yorkshire. Yes, the what was Spring Alpha Day for for two years is now Autumn Alpha Day, on the twelfth of September at the Yorkshire Wildlife Park, which is a... that's another venue. I, I again in twenty seventeen when we were up there, I didn't get to look around at the animal end, but uh, was able to get there in April with my family and. Uh, we had a brilliant day out. The, the place is enormous now. It's had a big extension. There's a new route in. Um, it, it's just absolutely phenomenal. I actually worked, looked at the steps on my phone. I've done six miles just walking around that bit. Now, normally I, I do six miles just walking around the cars. But <laughs> but for a family day out, I think later this year, that'll be super. I tell you, well, moving it from spring to autumn and calling it instead of spring alpha day autumn alpha day you can't you can't accuse us of not being creative no. and, uh, <laughs> i mean gosh that only took three weeks to think up didn't it <laughs> <laughs> what should we call it <laughs> so any, anything else going on in the in the club away from events any new um you know discount schemes or any new member benefits well, yes, of course, we've got the, the Halfords deal that I should leap on. Um, I've just related to uh, our sections starting again. Uh, we always have a fun concourse meeting in the East Midlands, and it's nice to get prizes for that. So from our kitty, um, I was armed with some money to go to Halfords and uh, bought up a nice load of prizes and saved seven quid just immediately with my discount card on top of the existing savings. So it, it was more like twelve pounds saved, which was you know just just great. Yeah, um, so that's, sure... that's a member benefit that benefits all the members because it was less absolutely less, less club funds being used. Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, so that's um, that's uh, the, the discount card is is new. We've got a new number. So again, a reminder for people: you can log on to the club forum, go under member benefits, find the Halfords link, open the PDF. You can save it on your phone or print it off and uh, make sure at the checkout they scan it as if it was an item and then it immediately takes 10 percent off everything you've bought in the store on top of existing discounts uh, i must say you, you can make a, a some whopping great savings at the moment this summer there's some real promotions on not just on detailing kit either <laughs> if people no, don't get trouble logging on or anything they can just drop me an email i can email them the voucher through it's not a problem and don't forget we we've got um we 
ironically, just before all the lockdowns and everything kicked in, Nick and I spent ages um, agreeing new partnership deals with a number of discount providers. So um, they're really sort of coming into their own now. So partners like Best Western Hotels and Warner Leisure Hotels, Cottages.com. I mean, some of these, some of the offers on Cottages.com for booking for 2022 are really unbelievable pricing at the moment. They're quite expensive for the, the rest of this summer because I think there's a bit of a supply and demand thing going on. Yeah. But honestly, if you go on our website and, and link through to our discount partners, some of the deals you can get, you can book a 2022 self-contained holiday with cottages.com with just a £25 deposit. Mm. But some of the pricing at the moment, if you go for March, April, May, sort of next year, the prices are really, really good. So now's a good time to start using some of the discount partnerships that we established just before lockdown, really inconveniently for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I managed to sneak in a cottages.com booking between lockdowns at the back end of last year and very yeah. impressed with it. And, it's, and they are good discounts. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not that we're forcing you to go on holiday with our providers, but it just gives people the opportunity, doesn't it? It's just another discount that just simply by being a member that you can get, you can save money for a family holiday or for a weekend away. And, you know, it's just all these bits and bobs that we try and do through the member benefits. They all just make our membership just better value, don't they? Or free in some cases. Yeah, exactly. No, that's true. Um, just, just changing subject slightly. I I think the last time we had one of these round tables, we were we were focused on all the things that were happening in the, the Stellantis merger and said we'd come back to some of those when things started to settle down. And I'm not, not sure how much they have settled down yet. Um, but it's been interesting to see some of the um, the rumours and the the semi announcements. Um, been very impressed with um, with Mister Imperato's Twitter presence. He's he's on there making comments about the brand, being much more visible, I think, than any of the uh, the Alpha Alpha management team have been historically. And he he's on there after every Formula One race, talking about how well the team's done and how they're moving forward. He's been talking about you know how much he's he's got into the the heritage of the brand and and you know how how important he thinks models like GTV and Duetto are to the to the brand's history, which is all positive. Uh, what what have we seen that's that's more concrete than that? Well, uh, he's he's actually recently um, been to the factories and uh, and. He's particularly noticed at Casino uh, how bang up to date the place is and, and was making some extremely positive comments about that. Um, I think with the PSA's involvement, there's a degree of concern that the cars will probably become potentially become a little less Italian. But he does tend to counter that quite well. And um, I think uh, he, he made one slip, though, recently saying that the Giorgio platform was going to be cancelled. Um, but then he had to correct that almost immediately as people were panicking that, oh, it means immediate end to Stelvio's and Julia's. But he said, no, it's, been, it's actually being adapted and brought into the family platforms that are coming out of Stellantis. So that was that was quite interesting, how, certainly how the Italian press got hold of it. <laughs> but uh, he has been mentioning that, yes, um, Alphas uh, may well be produced in Poland, Tishy, um, as platform sharing has to come in. Uh, how long that's going to be, we're not sure. He is focusing, though, very much on having a proper, solid 10-year plan for the brand. Now, we've we've heard about plans before. There always used to be five years, but he wants things to be concrete. Now, at the moment, I think my feeling is they've probably got the next five years pretty much nailed down now. Uh, it's the next five that things start to get exciting, and hopefully that's when we'll see things like uh, GTVs and spiders reappearing. Uh, meantime they need to get the numbers up and that means SUVs um, and perhaps a refreshes for the existing ones too but we'll see how that develops and of course there's a lot of um, behind Tonali he's very keen to see that the the new C SUV has, has good performance he wants to see a plug-in hybrid from the off with good power um, fingers crossed that comes off we know there's going to be a six month delay there apparently from the original plans for it appearing um, early next year. It looks like it's going to be in Europe middle of next. Um, if I was a betting man, I'd think early 2023 for UK at best. But but let's see. Um, 
and and he, he the a potential small SUV has been touched on and potential for that being a or, or there being also a Giulietta replacement but there's nothing concrete in that space but it is good to hear that he wants to see the new Alphas maintaining a proper sporting edge and I think I read that he wants to see a quadrifolio continuing but um, they won't make a quadrifolio just for the sake of it. Um, Veloce is a great name anyway, as, as owners of them know. Um, but there's plenty that can be done to, uh, you know, to keep that, that proper sporting edge on alphas, even when you're trying to seek mass market and, and, and higher numbers. I guess with all the changes that are inevitable around powertrains, a five-year plan really doesn't make much sense at the moment because there's going to be so much change over the next 10 years. Um, that you really need to be thinking further ahead. I guess the other the other thing that strikes me is uh, there is a fear that the platforms are going to get more French, if you like. Um, but with with Harold Vester, the the father of the Julia, heading up the whole design program for the whole of Stellantis, hopefully there's a a, a real risk that all of the products get a little bit more Italian. Yeah, that'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> We've heard a few rumours about dealer networks as well, haven't we? Yes, um, I think when PSA took over Vauxhall, there, were, there was quite a degree of shake-up, and uh, I think we can expect that to happen across the uh, the, the market too in the UK. Um, there's clearly everybody's thinking, well, gosh, there must be a load of overlap now. Um, How is it going to shake up? But uh, there's no formal things being widely broadcast, but we will see change, no doubt. Uh, I would imagine we'll see uh, a focus on some bigger hubs of Stellantis brands, maybe split French Italian for want of a broad, a, a better phrase, uh, Jeep's American, but there you go. Um, we'll just see how that goes, but th- there's got to be some economies of scale now. And I know I see adverts for Peugeot, for example, very much pushing online click type things rather than traditional dealer. I think there's going to be a lot of change over the next probably three to five years. I don't think it'll be instantaneous. I, I was involved in conversations when I was at Dell in the mid nineties um, about you know setting up direct sales platforms for the automotive industry, and and if any industry has been largely untouched by the internet over the last 25, 30 years, it's been automotive, um, and I think COVID's probably put an end to that. Yeah, there'll, there'll always be the need for uh, a certain amount of uh, direct interaction. Um, and um, I don't think we're going to see the back of all dealerships at all. I think there'll be some amalgamation uh, into certain sites, certain areas, but probably it's the smaller ones that may convert to maybe service only, for example. This is all, you know, conjecture. We've seen it happen with certain other brands. but um... And I was going to say, obviously, there are things like service that, that the internet won't ever affect but i guess mm-hmm. as as things evolve there's going to be a lot more firmware downloads and yeah you know, <laughs> online booking for a battery swap on your drive that's and... right i'm already seeing firmware things landing on my um julia because it's kind of connected now with a little sim card built into it uh, and that's great actually i really like it and it normally tells you just as you've finished your journey that something's downloading to it but <laughs> if you ignore it it eventually comes through <laughs> much like a general pc update so that's all the stuff that's coming, but it's it's kind of easy to forget that there's two um, there's two award winning cars in the showrooms for people to buy. Um, we just had an update on the uh, on the affinity deal, haven't we? Yeah, the so I mean, look, our affinity deal is is absolutely first class, and um, you know we've had it for the best part of a year now, and it always covered Alfa Romeo and, and Jeep, um, but. Yeah, our partnership with Alfa Romeo, or rather with Stellantis in the UK, is going from strength to strength, and they've kind of recognised that. And so now the Affinity deal covers all Alfa Romeo, all Jeep, as well as our Bath and Fiat and Fiat Professional. So, you know, if if you're a member of our club, not only can you get a discount, um, uh, and, and both discounted in cash or finance or PCP deals on any new Alfa Romeo or Jeep, but you can now get them on all our Baths, all Fiat's, and a new Fiat van if you wanted one. So, um, yeah, it's an incredible deal now. Uh, I mean, it was outstanding before, but now with with basically all of what was the FCA brands, um, yeah, tremendous value for money. I just saw Nick's eyes light up when you said new Fiat van, but I think we need to put yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> squash that one well, now. 
Well, to be honest, I, I'm ke- I keep um, poking Nick with a stick, saying, "Look, we'll get you the new um, all electric Ducato," and he sort of, he sort of, he, he wants to be, you know, carbon friendly, but he's he kind of still wants a big diesel engine. I think he doesn't want to take four days to get to Scottish Italian car day. <laughs> no, that would that'd be a nightmare trying to get back from Scotland, <laughs> isn't it? Or keep keep the diesel generator in the boot. That's the other option. That's it. That's what you need. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> But yeah, well, the one that stood out for me on the Ducatos were the 2020 models with 46 percent off. I mean, that's phenomenal. <laughs> and 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 VAT off that if you yeah. uh, if you're professional. Yeah, just amazing. On some of the model year 20s, even on Stelvios, you can get 20 percent off. I and mean, we're talking about you know 10,000 pound for some of the models. Even on the very latest models, we're still at sort of. Between sixteen and eighteen percent, you're still talking about seven thousand, eight thousand pounds off of a car, and you can still do it through finance and PCP and so on. So, I mean, your forty quid membership to the club has just saved you seven thousand on a new car. It's unbelievable, really. It really is. I mean, I was looking through uh, even on a baths that aren't ridiculously expensive, but it's a fifteen percent discount on any a bath at the moment. I still love the things. I certainly love ours. Um, what's the other one I spotted? The 500X looks particularly attractive in that new bright blue, and that's 24% off. Wow. So what, what's the situation with some of the newer models, like the, the Fiat 500E? So that's a really attractive car, but th- there's already pent-up demand for it. But uh, I understand the uh, the deal is um, a package of up to £2,000 worth of extras, which could include um, servicing, uh, et cetera, as well as actual bits on the cars themselves but the the base price isn't being discounted no, there's no extra charge on it john is what you're trying to say oh no <laughs> <laughs> okay so we, we've talked a lot about uh, events we talked about national alpha day and uh, uh, and some of the other events this year and um, are, are we continuing our our membership deals uh, at those events nick we are going, yes, any events we're at, whether it be ours or Auto Italia's um, or Silver and Classic, we will be waiving the £7.50 joining fee as usual. So if you're interested in joining, those come and see us. Um, also, the talking of joining, the, over the last few months, the number of joiners has been well up and also the number of people not renewing is right down. So we're, we're up nudging 4,000 members again now, which is the first time in many years. That's really really promising times thanks nick that's great news to end the show as i mentioned earlier our next guest is vicky butler henderson who will be with us to talk about her career about hooning around kerber in a variety of mitos about her new car girl youtube channel as well as what we have planned with her for national alpha day episode 34 will be available from podbean itunes google Podcasts, youtube and almost everywhere else good podcasts are found from 1 30 p.m on june the 20th until then stay safe 